Hello. So today I want to discuss about a problem that appeared in Inma 2013. It's a bit combinatorial problem. It's a nice example of bijections. This will give a general idea to how to solve combinatorial or combinatorial number theory questions using bijection principle. At the end of the video, I'll give you a similar type of question that involves bijection. You can try that on your own and type your solution in the comment box. So let's begin. The question says n is an integer greater than one, and t n is the number of non-empty subsets of one to up to n, with the property that average of elements of s is an integer. I have to prove that t n minus n is always even. So let's begin. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world. in mathematical olympiads physics olympiads computer science and informatics olympiads isi cmi entrances and research projects for school and college students my key idea to show show i'll show that tn minus n is size of some set yes now i'll partition my s to two parts a and b these are two partitions of my set s so in that case i get tn minus n equal to size of a plus size of b and now i will show that a and b these two sets are bijective so my tn minus n becomes two times size of a and that is even so let's begin for that we just introduce some notation for a favorable subset s we define average of s to be s bar that is just summation of a such that a is in s and we we'll divide by total size of s this is the average of s i call m to be my all favorable subsets of 1 to up to n so m is s is a subset of 1 2 up to n such that s bar is an integer and we have size of n is just tn now one thing is obvious that i want to find all favorable subsets of 1 to up to n and all singleton elements all singleton sets is when previously set satisfy the property because it is just a, like it's trivial so like 1 2 up to n these all lies inside and these are the only single dot sets that that is in m so all other sets in m they have at least two elements So first, I partition them into two parts, whether they're singleton or not. So only singleton elements are one, two up to n, and they're in n of them. I call the other partition to be other sets to be say m prime. In that case, what we get? We have t n equal to size of all singleton, like number of all singleton such sets equal to n plus size of m prime. That is t n minus n equal to size of m prime. So now my target is to partition m prime into two parts a union b, such that they are bijective. So how do we do that? Let's see. M prime equal to s belongs to m, such that size of s is greater than or equal to two. All favorable subsets that have at least two elements. Now we'll partition into two parts. Now this we already know that the average is an integer. So a natural question can arise that whether that average integer whether that also lies inside that set or not. So we'll partition according to that case. So. We take a to b 
all such elements of m prime all s belongs to m prime such that average of elements also lies inside s bar is in s and b to b such that they are not inside s belongs to m prime such that s bar is not in s so we'll take any set in m, m prime we'll compute the average if that lies inside it we'll conclude it in a else we conclude it in b like for example take this set 1 comma 3 its average is 1 plus 3 by 2 that is 2 that is not inside so 1 comma 3 this is in b take another set 1 comma 3 comma 5 its average is 1 plus 3 plus 5 by 3 that is 9 by 3 that is 3 that is inside so 1 comma 3 comma 5 that is in a now we we'll try to find a bijection between element between the sets a and b now observe one thing i have a here and i have b here take any element s in a so you also know that s bar take any element s in a we try to relate with some element in b and that relation should be one one like we'll try to find an one one correspondence from a to b and then another one one correspondence from b to a and from square bernstein theorem we we'll conclude that a and b sets are bijectives so from a to b let let's try to do it from b to a first take any s in b we know that say s bar is x we know that s bar is not in x like x is not in s what can we say about the set s union x we know that sum of average of elements of s is x and as we add the average time then the average doesn't change because average of s union x just it is same as x because say say size of s is r like its elements are a1 up to ar then i have a1 a1 plus up to ar equal to just r times x and now when i add one element that is x like i take union with one element this is just r plus one times x and i average it and this is just x and so s union s union x has average x and that that is also in s union x so i conclude that if s is in b that would imply s union x is in a can i reverse the process like i take any element of a can i reverse this process to get an element in b it's possible that say i take an element s prime in a now I can I have to write s prime. It, now it should be of the from some element union is average, and you also know that average is inside. So what we do to reverse it? We just here we obtain the by here we obtain the relation by adding you taking union with average to reverse it. We just remove that element again. Like from s we got s union x. We just do this thing s union x and take it. If, and just remove the element x again to get back x. This is the this reverse of that process. So from in A, I have an set S prime, and we know that S prime bar is just inside. What we do? We just remove its average from there. Now is this one an element from A? Does this belongs to B? We have say S prime equal to A1 up to AR. This is the same thing. Say S prime bar equal to X. So I have A1 plus up to AR equal to R times X. Now if I remove an element X from there, so after removing I have R minus 1 elements. Like say I remove 
ये सफिक सम जे सो इन नाउ माय सम ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इज द समेशन ए आई सच दैट आई इक्वल टू 1 टू r एंड i नॉट इक्वल टू j एंड वी से a j इक्वल टू x बिकॉज़ एनी एलिमेंट ऑफ ए लाइक एनी सेट ऑफ ए हैज एवरेज इनसाइड इट सो इट्स एवरेज x इज सम ऑफ इक्वल टू सम ए आई आई से दैट इट इज a j so now i removed a j so now this is sum of r minus 1 elements and this is just r minus 1 times x so now it average with this thing is just r minus 1 x by r minus and that is x so keeping the average fixed so what did we do i have a here i have b here keeping keeping the average x fixed i have an set s that set not average inside it i uniquely map it to a set that is average inside it by just taking union and to get the reverse process i just take any element s prime here and we note that average is inside i just remove that average from there s prime difference x these are all one one because why you can easily figure that out on your now there is one problem we need one justification adding elements is okay but a and b are partitions of m and in in, in m sorry m prime in m prime all sets has cardinality at least 2 now i am doing s prime is going to s prime difference x like s prime difference the average like i am remo removing the averaging element but if my size of s prime is Two. Then my size of s prime ever like if I remove one element that then the cardinal becomes one, and if it is single ton it doesn't lie inside m prime because m prime is those that has at least two elements, so that would be a problem. So I need what I need to show in that case that I need to show that any element in A has at least three elements. So if I remove one element I would have at least two elements so that it lies in m prime. So, so though this is easy, but this needs justification. Take any S in A, so that S prime equal to X that is also lies in S. I'll show that S size of S is at least three. So let's say size of S is two. Say S equal to some. A comma B. The average of S is just A plus B by two. We know that it is inside S. So A plus B by two is either A or B. In either cases, A plus B by two equal to A implies A equal to B, and it is equal to B implies also equal to B. And that would mean size size of S is one because A and B are same thing, and that would be a contradiction. So in this case, I must have size of S is greater than or equal to three. So we have avoided that case. So this is the natural bijection between A and B. Let I take any element of A. I map it to unique element of B by removing just the average. And take any element of B. I just make it an element of A by just including the average because elements of B lacks the average inside them. So this is the one-one correspondence both between A to B and B to A. And we know that, like to finite sets, we have A and B, x and y. Say, if there is an injection from x to y, then size of x must be less than or equal to size of y. So between two finite sets, if we have injection from one to another and another to that one, then it would together imply size of x is less than equal. It is also greater than equal. So they must be equal. So they are bijective. I mean this is a very easy thing. So as we already got one injection from A to B and another injection from B to A, that would mean size of a is greater than equal to b and also less than equal to b. So we get size of equal to size of b. Thus. T n minus n equal to size of a plus size of b. That is two times size of a, and that is even. And we are done.
Now here is the problem that I want you to try on your own. We have an equilateral triangle. Of side length n. We cut it into n square many one cross one equilateral triangles. Count number of parallelograms. bounded inside the equilateral triangle that is determined by the grid lines for example let's see say if my side length is 2 how can I cut into 4 pieces this we just divide into 2 1 cross 1 parts they just join this part so we get four one plus one equilateral triangles if it is three i divide each side length into three equal parts one two three and we join them appropriately like this uh it's looking bad in here. and similar for four cross five and five cross five and in general for n cross n it looks like something like this so all parallel lines and suppose we have all this type of n cross just one i have divided the n cross n just into n square many one cross one parts so i need to find number of parallelograms inside like how many parallelograms like this for example here this is a parallelogram this is a parallelogram this is a parallelogram so in general i have divided into n square many one plus one equilateral triangles i have to count total number of parallelograms that fits inside this big equilateral triangle of all sizes and the side lengths are along these grids so you can count it directly but i rec i will recommend you to count using bijections so you can type that in this chat box and if you like this type of problems you can check our channel regularly and keep yourself updated thank you chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.